Todd, Michael, congratulations. You've made it into the final round of this competition, which means that you're both one step closer to the title of Forged and Fire champion and that check for $10,000. Now we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is the Compulon. Good luck. We'll see you in five days. It feels really good to be home and back in my home forge. The Compilon is completely new to me. Part of this is a historical recreation, so it's really important I make it historically accurate. All right, here's my new sword. That's good. I'm really nervous because it doesn't take much for this to get messed up. I feel I can do it, but I just have to stay on task. <sighs> Looks pretty good. My goal today was to have a profiled sword. That happened, and now I'm a little further ahead than I anticipated. I'm beat. Yesterday, I had to upside the motor on the power hammer. Okay. And forged out my piece. There you go. That looks like the picture. Today, I want to make sure I get that thing all tapered, narrowed down. Getting the weight off the blade and trying to thin that down was a task in itself. I hope I have it thin enough for Doug. Hopefully, it'll satisfy him. It's getting a lot lighter. Ready for heat treating. Quenching is a real critical thing. You don't want to hear that little tink, you know, that crack sound. Good. No cracks, no warps. Skate. Yes. I'm very happy with it. Good Lord, thank you, Lord. Today, I'm going to cut the spur out of the tip of the blade. All right, here we go. There's a lot of bad things that can happen here. Taking a chisel to any part of your blade can result in unfixable blemishes. Take it. Time for the heat treat. The heat treat's the worst part of any blade making process, so I'm incredibly nervous. Warping is the number one concern I have. When I dunk the blade into that oil, it's gonna do what it's gonna do, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. My gut wrenches. Warp. Sucks. The thinner the steel, the more tricky it can be to get the heat treat to go off without any issues. But as I look at it, I like it. it took kind of a scimitar warp, adds character. If it doesn't go side to side, it bows up, kind of like a katana. That is the best warp you can possibly take on. I will take it. Today, I think the plan is probably eating sawdust. Going to work on that handle the way it's designed. It's a little unusual. And the handle has that protruding Y that comes up towards your arm. It looks like it would be uncomfortable to yield, but it's their blade. I'm just making it. <laughs> Mark up the front guard and cut that one out. I'm going to do the top guard as one piece and fit it to the handle. It does kind of look like a raptor, kind of. It's not what I was going for, but that's what it turned out to be. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> I'm a little apprehensive on testing. If something crucially goes wrong, I won't have a blade to turn in, so I'm gonna leave this to the judges to test. Very nice. It looks good. It's a done deal. This is my last day. I feel pretty good. Just need to grind the tank, fit it to the handle, and just make stuff pretty and sharp. The handle material is a big block of mahogany. Mahogany is a traditional wood. It's tough, it's rot resistant, so I don't have too many concerns about going into this. Getting this handle put on, and that is the point of no return. My only reservations with this blade are that it's hefty. But a lot of my research pointed to the fact that this is a heavy sword. For the royal flair of this sword, genuine human hair. That is something that was on these handles, so it's merely for historical accuracy. And it's funny. <laughs> well, it's a Campelon. All right, gentlemen, to test the sharpness of your blades, I'll be chopping through our cat's cradle of rope here. Todd, you're up first. You ready? I am. Um... 
All right, Todd, this blade has all the weight right here. You know, it's a weapon that's designed to be used one or two-handed, but controlling all that forward weight definitely puts this as a two-hand only sword. It's a good looking piece, and it definitely is a cutter. Michael, you're up. You ready? Let's do it. Still a very heavy weapon. I would have zero confidence swinging this one-handed that it wouldn't get away from me. But the weight distribution on your blade is further back, which gave me quite a bit more control to chop those ropes. It's definitely a cutter, so good job. Nicely done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. I'm going to take your campilan and deliver lethal blows on this big carcass. Todd, you're up first. You ready? I sure am. All right, Todd, the swing over here, almost cut all the way. And of course, with an easy swing on the way back, it cut the pig in half. Your campilan will kill. Thank you. All right, Michael, your turn. You ready? Let's do it. All right, Mike. So even though it is a heavier blade, its counterbalance allows it to wield going forward and backward easily. So it was an easy recovery for the final chop. Overall, your campilan will kill. Thank you. Good job. All right, gentlemen. To test the strength and durability of your blade, I'll be chopping into this green bamboo. Bamboo, it's hard stuff. If you didn't harden your blade right, there's a flaw in it. This will tell it. I am praying that my edge holds up. Whoa. Yeah, I don't feel any damage whatsoever on the edge. It did a job on that bamboo, and it's clean. Well done. Thank you. Michael, you ready? Let's do it. OK. Well. I thought I saw something, but it was just bamboo stuck to your blade. It's fine. There's no damage there. Your blade hasn't changed shape at all. Good job. Well done. All right, Bladesmiths, from the moment you guys lit those coal forges until this moment, you've put in a lot of hard work. It's been a lot of stress. But in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is Michael. Congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Todd, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Todd, this is what we judges expect of the third round. Two beautiful blades equally matched, but it comes down to the finer details. Your blade isn't as well balanced as that of your opponents, and your design and detail were not as strong. So for those reasons, you have to let you go. I understand. Be proud of your work, Todd, because it was a close call. But please surrender your weapon. I never thought about making it this far. This is the first sword I've ever made. I'm proud of what I did, and it held up good. I didn't think that I would be capable of doing this. And you never know what kind of strength you can find. Michael, congratulations. You are the Forge of Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. <laughs> All right, what's going on inside of there? Is surreal. Uh, wasn't expected starting this competition, but huge affirmation of my skills. Please 
present your weapon to the judges? It's surreal. It hasn't really set in yet. All the years that I've put into this hobby, this craft, and now to be here and be the Fortune Fire champion, it's pretty amazing.